now, Autolite and its 98,000 dealers everywhere present Suspense. I was telling you about, honey. Oh, it's charming. Hi there. Very good. Hi, right, Joe. Right. Right. Meet him again. Oh, Three straight oh. sets. Can't, Joe. Here, let me have oh. your towel. Boy, somebody better teach him how to hit a ball. Somebody. Oh, good. Oh, drink. Fine. Here, boy. Guess what I want. Oh, Well, what a sight for a thirsty man. Hey, you're not really thinking about going, are you? I meant what I said, Johnny. I have to go more packed. My ticket and everything. I never heard of anyone coming down for a visit for only two weeks. Well, in the North, two weeks is considered quite a long visit. That's the trouble, you folks up there. You never take your time about anything. The only thing we're speedy about down here is falling in love. Now you're just being southern, gallant. I wasn't being anything. I meant it. Oh, Joe, honey. Don't you believe one word of what he's saying? My fiancé is a terrible liar. I was wondering where y'all were. I don't believe he even missed us, Charlie. You think he missed us, Cassie? I declare, Charlie, for a man with a temper like you, you sure put up with a lot of nonsense. It's a wonder you two are still engaged. Oh, honey, everybody knows Charlie and I have been engaged since the beginning of time. And it's too late for either one of us to change our minds. Isn't it, Charlie? I don't know about that, but I do know it's not too late to have a drink. Joe, honey, you don't need another drink. Oh, don't I? Come on, everybody, let's get a quick one. Oh, Joe, no. Well, I really ought to get home and finish my packing. Well, that's right, honey. I clean forgot. You leaving us tomorrow? Yes, yeah. I am. We're going to miss you something terrible. But then I guess we're just too dull for anyone from New York. Oh, now, Marie, I've been to more parties here in the last two weeks than I go to New York in a whole season. I sometimes wonder if you ever do anything else. Well, what else is there to do in a pokey old place like this? I'd go back to New York in a minute if I could. Yeah, and about to die if you did, Cassie. Well, it's not because of my aunt that I'm not going back. What do you mean by that, Cassie? You trying to hide something from us? Never you mind, but I didn't give up my career for nothing. Now, you just dance for us here and forget about New York and your career. All right. Tonight, I'm going to do a dance you've never seen before. Nobody's seen it, not even in New York. Kathy, I'm sorry I'm going to miss that. Who says you're going to miss it? Well, I really have a lot of last-minute things to do, Charlie. Really, Just I... the same. You're staying for the dance. We'll make it a farewell celebration. Yes, we will. That's right, honey. And just to make sure you don't forget about us, we'll get a promise out of you tonight. A promise to come back for our wedding.
<laughs> Lovely down here at night. Air is sort of heavy, sweet. If you like it so much, why you're so all fired anxious to hurry away. No, why, Charlie? You mean Marie? I mean Marie. Honey. <laughs> <laughs> I I wish I could make you understand how things are down here. But you can't. I'm an outsider, is that it? I didn't say that. I just didn't say it. Nobody ever says it. Everybody down here couldn't have been nicer or hospitable. They're always there, just the same. It's like being outside of a shop looking through the window. That's why you can't understand about Marie and me. I understand you're engaged to be married. What more is there than that? A lot more. Honey, it doesn't mean anything. It's just something we sort of drifted into. Everybody's expected us to marry for as long. I guess I just sort of took it for granted. How was I to know that, that you were going to happen to me? Well, after tonight, you won't have to worry about that anymore. You can just go back to doing what everyone expects you to. Don't talk like that to me. You don't know what it's like in a little town like this. Charlie, you're hurting well, me. What do you think you've been doing to me the last two weeks? You think I haven't tried to get out of it? But we've been engaged so long, huh? How could I do that to her? Would you marry anybody when you feel like that? Charlie, please. Just making it worse. Honey, don't. Don't, honey. Don't let anybody see you like that. Come on. There. Oh. There, that's better. Better go out and do some repair work. I'll go with you. Don't let anybody see you like this, or if anything's wrong, it'll be all over town in the morning. Don't tell me you're confiscating all the flasks here tonight. No, sir. This is purely a social visit. I even checked my gun upstairs to prove it. <laughs> Boys, we were leaving here. We'll see you down here later, sir. Oh, I'll be around. It's been a pleasure to make your place. I'll wait for you here, honey. No, please don't. Especially for night and it's too tight. Aunt Kate's trying to fix it. It is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Do you know my Aunt Kate? How do you do? I do. So you are Mr. Hale's niece? Yeah. My, you certainly are pretty for a northern girl. <laughs> <laughs> Aunt Kate, you'd be surprised how many pretty northern girls I met when I was up there. Well, there's pretty and pretty, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> is it all right, Doc? Just a mite more. Will you hold still, child? Well, there you are, Joan, honey. I've been looking high and low for you. Kathy, honey, is that another new dress? My gracious, half of this little old town could live on just what you spend on clothes. Joan, could I see you outside for just a minute? Mike. Right. Kathy, I'll see you downstairs. Uh huh. Right? Awful nice to have met you. Y'all gave us an awful turn when you opened that door. You won't breathe a word of it, will you, honey? Of course not. Who else saw us? Only Charlie and me. Oh, well, then it's all right. As long as Charlie didn't take it into his little old head to romp all over Joe. But it's romping all over you. Oh, he'd do that. 
But I know how to handle him. It's just when he's first mad that I'm scared of him. He's got such an awful temper. That was all you wanted. Oh, and honey, don't get your hopes up, will you? This isn't going to make a mighty difference between Charlie and me, I promise you. Pretty sure everybody knows Catherine's gonna dance. Oh. Even those couples dipping outside. You'd have to be dead not to hear that. <laughs> hey, Joan, are you sure Marie's all right up there? Hmm? Well, of course, why shouldn't she be? Well, Charlie did see me kissing her upstairs in the dressing room with that temper of his. I don't know. Scott Fitzgerald. Hours after we found Marie's body, still have a nightmarish unreality to me. They let everyone go home who was watching the dance at the time of the murder, except our group, all of us who'd come with Marie. The sheriff placed Charlie under arrest gathered the rest of us in the dressing room. I tell you, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. When I came in here and found that poor little thing lying there on the floor, I couldn't believe my eyes. Must be a great shock to you, ma'am, but I want you to try and tell me about the quarrel that you overheard. Do I have to tell you about that? Do I have to? Well, I'm afraid so, Miss oh, Jones. but Charlie's such a nice boy. He did quarrel with her, but I know he wouldn't have hurt her. Well, what were they quarreling about? I don't rightly know, Jerry. Well, maybe our little visitor can help us out on that. Charlie was with you when Marie and Joe were together, wasn't he? Look, ma'am, this is a police investigation. Now, Charlie was with you, and he saw Joe and Marie together alone in that room, didn't he? All right, he did. That doesn't mean he killed her. He didn't do it. I know he didn't do it. You've got a loyal little supporter here, Charles. Looks like I need one. Yeah, looks like you do, son. Are you still sticking to your story about being in the locker room all the time? No story, Sheriff. That's where I was. 
Chef, listen to me. I don't even have a gun. How could I have done it? Well, you didn't need to have a gun, son. Mine was right handy, and you knew it. I told you that earlier. Where did you hide it? Chef, I never even saw your gun. You gotta believe me. Sure, I was mad at Marie, but I, but I didn't kill her. But everybody else was downstairs watching the dance, son. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry as I can be. There's no need for you folks to wait round any longer. Come on, Don, and I'll take you home now. Sheriff, could I, could I please see Charlie alone just for a minute, please? Oh, I'm afraid not, ma'am. Johnny, honey, you better go on home. Captain and Kate will drive you. Charlie, you know I believe you, don't you? You didn't do it. You know you didn't do it. Thanks, honey. That helps. That helps a lot. I just came back to see if we couldn't take you home. Why, that's very kind of you. Somebody went and left their golf bags here. I don't know who oh, it could have been. Mine. I had to put there so I'd be sure enough to forget them. Oh, I didn't know. Would there you... be room in the car for them? Oh, no, honey. I don't see how we can get them to the car. Well, that's easy. I'll carry you. No, no, let me. Oh, no, please don't no, be please. silly. I do it all please, the time. Please, no. Where did you find that gun? It fell out of the golf bag. Why, Sheriff, I'm just as surprised as you are. I don't know how it could have got there. Somebody put it there. And it wasn't Charlie. Sheriff, he never hid that gun in my golf bag. Wouldn't he? Well, now, you ladies can't go home just yet. You'll have to wait for me downstairs. Oh, but, Sheriff, I'm so tired. I'm sorry, ma'am, but you'll have to wait downstairs. Charlie all his life, haven't you? Ever since he was born. He used to run away when he was little all the time. But he never got as far as my house before he got hungry. You're very fond of him, aren't you? Of course I am. And how can you stand by and let this happen to him? Why don't you help him? But there's nothing I can do. Can nothing. Tell him where you found the gun you hid in my golf bag. I never saw that gun before I found it in your bag. You... Somebody has to. The sheriff said that nobody was upstairs except Charlie when Marie was killed. He said that we were all we were all down here watching Kathy dance when we heard the shots. But that isn't quite true, is it? Because you were up there too, weren't you? He knows it, but he knows I couldn't oh, have done it. You get that gun. Ladies, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. But you know, sometimes things aren't as simple as the scene. How do you mean, Sheriff? It's all right, Miss Jones. It's all right. No need to get excited. No, no, just an experiment I was working on. Nobody was hurt, ma'am. Just a gun went off. You see, Miss Jones, the thing that puzzles me is that Marie was shot twice, but there were four... Four of the cartridges were fired from my gun. Now, I don't quite understand that. I thought maybe you could help me. All right, I might as well tell you, Sheriff. I, I could, I've had to tell you sooner or later. I couldn't have let Charlie suffer for it. I didn't. Why? Why? For the same reason I've done everything for the last 25 years. For Kathy. I thought so. I, I don't have to tell you how I feel about Kathy. I've raised her ever since her mother died. She's been like my own child. Sometimes I even forgot she wasn't my child. I've always tried to give her everything she wanted. Kathy was in love with Joe Cable. Mary was trying to take him away from her. 
Oh, I told her it was no good, it was good riddance, but she wouldn't listen to me. But she still wanted him. So you killed Marie so she could have him. I don't believe it. Oh, I know it was an awful, dreadful thing to do. But when you love anybody as much as I love Kathy, you'll do anything for him. Anything. Aunt Kate? <laughs> what is it, Aunt Kate? What's happened? It's all right, Chuck. I told them. Oh, they knew it anyway. That I did it. Aunt Kate is just doing this to protect me. Don't you listen to it, Sheriff. It was you, wasn't it, Kathy? Yes, but I didn't mean to kill her, Sheriff. I just wanted to frighten her into staying away from Joe. And then the gun went off. It went off. You couldn't have. You, you were downstairs dancing when we heard the shots. No, this was before the dance. Nobody heard the shots because the band was making so much noise. Nobody except Aunt Kate because she was in the room right next door. But we, we heard it. We... No, you didn't. Not the shots that killed Marie. Aunt Kate was trying to protect me. So she got the gun and she fired some shots out of the window so everybody would think I was dancing and couldn't have done it. I'm sorry, darling. I didn't know they'd blame Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> I left town soon after that, and I've never been able to go back since. I couldn't bear to, and neither could Charlie. We had to find our happiness in a place without so many memories. Next week, our story will be an unusual play entitled The Vial of Death, the story of a bottle of cholera germs enough to infect the whole city stolen from a scientist's car, with authorities having just the waning hours of the night to find it before death and panic stalk the streets. Our star, the distinguished French actor Claude Dauphin, The Vial of Death. Another story well calculated to keep you in suspense.